Hey there folks, Steve Dawson here coming to you from the Hen House studio in Nashville, Tennessee. And I thought I would share a few tips that I've learned along the way in recording roots in Americana music. And today we're going to take a look at polar patterns on condenser microphones on acoustic guitars. Wow, is that ever specific. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button and like it, share it if you'd like, and let me know what you'd like me to talk about next. All right, in a previous video that I made, I talked about recording an acoustic guitar with various microphones. And today we're just going to look a little bit more in depth at the condenser microphone, which for a lot of people is a real go-to for recording an acoustic guitar. Now, one feature that a lot of condenser microphones have, not all, but quite a few of them, is an adjustable polar pattern. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Neumann U87. It's a good example of one and it has an adjustable polar pattern. So it's on the front of the microphone, this is the U87 here, on the front of the microphone, right in the middle there. I hope you can see that. There's a little thing that looks like a mushroom, and that is the polar pattern. What that refers to is the directionality of the capsule. And the capsule is what's right inside there, picking up your lovely sounds. So various polar patterns on a microphone is a pretty powerful tool. It's something that you can use to your advantage as an engineer or as a musician to get different tones out of an acoustic guitar in this case. So the polar pattern on a microphone is generally on the front, not always, but it's on the front of the microphone. So in this case we're talking about a Neumann U87, which is a pretty standard condenser microphone. It's a good one, but it's also in a lot of studios across the world. So this one, um, on the very front of the microphone, as you can see right at the front there, I hope you can see that, this little thing here is the polar pattern, and it's switchable. There's one position, another position, and a third position. That's pretty standard, although some microphones have more than three, but we're just going to talk about three particular ones today. So a little bit of nerdy information. As you can see, I think when I hold this up really close like that, you can actually see the capsule in there. Now, switchable mics like this have a front and a rear capsule, and they're mounted onto a uh, central plate. Can't really see that, I guess. But that's what's happening in there. There's a front and a rear capsule. And the polar pattern, as you switch it, is giving you various combinations of those two capsules in conjunction with one another. So on this U87, we have three different patterns. And starting on the uh, far right one, for me, I don't know which way that's showing up for you, but this is the Omni one, which is, looks like a circle. I think you can see that in the purple spot right there. And then in the middle, the second position, that's the cardioid. It kind of looks like a mushroom. And then here is the figure of eight. That's the third pattern. So first of all, the middle one, the cardioid one, this mushroom looking one, that's kind of the standard. That's what a lot of people go with. And there's a good reason for that. It's because it picks up largely from sort of in a mushroom shape, as the picture suggests, um, from a little bit behind, but not the rear of the capsule, uh, a little bit behind and then completely in front and then a little bit behind again over on this side. So it's sort of like a little mushroom based around this capsule. It's great because it rejects things from behind the microphone, which means that when you're recording and you put the microphone in front of an acoustic guitar, you're getting the acoustic guitar sound, you're not getting the stuff that's coming from the other side, which is obviously to your advantage. So I guess the question is, why would you use anything else other than that? And there are some reasons. So the first one, and the important one for me that comes up quite a bit, is that the uh, cardioid version has what's called proximity effect. And as you get closer to the thing that you're recording, in this case an acoustic guitar, the proximity effect actually accentuates the low frequencies and kind of can make it boomy or woofy and sound slightly less pleasing than it could. Now, that's what happens when you get really close to the guitar. As you back away from the source with the microphone, that clears up. So that's not as much of an issue if you're like, you know, a foot, a foot and a half, two feet away from the guitar. But if you have this thing up really close for some reason, and that reason could be that you're trying to isolate the guitar a little bit, if other people are playing and you want to get the microphone really close, you're going to run into this thing with proximity effect. And it's going to accentuate some of those frequencies that aren't super awesome. So the other two patterns, the figure of eight and the omnidirectional patterns, don't really have that um, issue of proximity effect. So one that I like to use a lot is the omni, which is the all around, which means both capsules are, the front and the rear, are um, picking up equally. And you get this 
essentially like a full circle around the microphone. And you would think that immediately that would be problematic because you'll pick up a lot of other noises and room sound. And yeah, you do. But this pattern also gives you the flattest frequency response of the three. And picking up other sources isn't as much of a problem as you'd think. You know, in some cases it's kind of cool to have some bleed. And it gives you a really natural sound. And it's kind of why I often prefer the Omni over the cardioid a lot of the times is because of that. So the figure eight is cool because, again, you have both the front and the back capsule working, but the voltage to the back capsule is the opposite from the voltage going to the front capsule. And that actually causes phase cancellations, which gives you this figure eight pattern. So what's cool about figure eight? Well, it picks up from the front and the back. It doesn't have that proximity effect problem. And the rejection from the side, so the figure eight is a lot from the front, a lot from the back, and basically nothing from the sides. And that's because of that um, phase cancellation that's happening on the sides. And what that means is you can, you can really get a lot of strong cancellation here and here as you place that mic. And so that's a great thing when you're recording, in a couple situations actually, when you're recording um, in a band, it's great because you can position the mic such that you know if a drummer was over here, you could be aiming the drummer at the side of the mic and it's gonna, uh, take some of that uh, initial transient away, or if there's a singer or something over here, it will also isolate the guitar from that. Another way that these figure eights are really cool is you can position it also if the guitar player is singing, and the figure eight is really useful for, for that because you can you know position the mic so it's pointing at the guitar, and the side of the mic is pointing at the vocalist, and that's going to cancel a lot of the vocal sound going into the acoustic guitar mic. Very handy indeed. So as we did in the previous video about the different microphones, we're going to try a few different styles of guitar playing on an acoustic guitar, and we're going to hear the three polar patterns of this U87 uh, really close, one foot away, and then three feet away, and be able to compare all those microphone positions so you can hear them in real time. Okay, so we're going to start with a strummed acoustic guitar, and we'll listen to it from about three feet away in all three polar patterns. Okay, now let's do the same, a strummed acoustic guitar, but just one foot away. Now we'll get this thing really close up there, closer than you'd probably want to be, but this could be a situation that you would find yourself in if you're recording an acoustic guitar with a bunch of other musicians and you really want to get isolated. You might want to jam this thing closer than a foot. So that's what we're going to hear right now. Okay, now let's just listen to a little bit of single note playing. Here's from three feet away.
here's some more single note acoustic guitar from about one foot away. jamming it really close up again and we'll listen to some single note stuff with the three polar patterns. Okay, and just to give you a full picture, let's listen to a little finger picking. And this finger picking will be done into the mic in all three patterns. And uh, this is from about three feet away again. Okay, and same thing, finger picking from about one foot away. Now we're going to jam it right on up in there and get really close, closer than a foot. Okay, I think you'll agree that uh, the differences are subtle but definitely noticeable and I hope this has helped you hear a little bit of the difference of the three polar patterns available in the context of recording an acoustic guitar. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.